Today, I have a great singer, songwriter, and producer who's about to release his new album, 100 Cowboys. He's a prolific writer, sharing his creative techniques and workflows that keep fun and passion at the center of his work. Please welcome Carter Vale to the Music Production Podcast. This episode is sponsored by Baby Audio, and I want to show you their new exciting vocal plugin called Humanoid. I've got a little vocal here, and this is what it sounds on its own. But it's something I can never do. The lyrics inspired by Terminator 2, it seemed appropriate. And now I'm going to turn on hurts, Humanoid. But there's nothing wrong and with you. this is about as tame as Humanoid gets. I know we'll bring back in the cry, music. And I'm going to quantize the vocals a little more. We can do. robotify it even further. And we can play with the formants. But there's nothing wrong with you. Lots of versatility here with just these few controls. And then the next section allows us to add in some synthesis. So there's a wavetable synthesizer that combines with your voice. You can choose different waveforms and experiment with those forms as much as you like. And of course, you can always automate this stuff for fun. You can add in a higher octave. Or a lower octave. Filter this down a bit. And even add some fun effects. A widen and a warble. <laughs> There's a freeze, which is really cool. So just engage that. And then there's a buffer you can play with. Very versatile plugin here for getting those extreme vocal effects. Now you might think of autotune as being subtle to extreme effects. Humanoid starts at extreme and goes way beyond that, which is why it's so fun. And a really cool feature is you can use MIDI from your MIDI controller to trigger the notes inside of Humanoid. So I'm gonna switch on the MIDI switch here. I've got push and I'm gonna play this again. And we're gonna be able to hear what we can do with our MIDI controller, which is pretty cool. I know why you cry. But it's something I can never do. And by playing the pads on my keyboard, it's when it hurts. I can make my own new melodies. With you. <laughs> I know why you cry, but it's something I can never do. So you can resynthesize your parts like you would on a vocoder. I'm gonna go back to the scale mode. So this is Humanoid. I'm just scratching the surface playing around with it here and having a lot of fun. It's a really cool extreme vocal plugin that takes your vocals to all kinds of cool futuristic levels. So check it out. Go to babyaud.io. That's babyaud.io. And check out Humanoid. Use the code MPP15 to save 15% off. The plugin is currently discounted, so this code will get you an extra 15% off. It's a great time to check it out. Humanoid is a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it, and I think you will too. Go to babyaud.io and use the code MPP15 to save 15%. Carter, welcome to the show. Great to have you, man. Thanks so much for having me. You got excited the new album here. coming out? Yeah, I'm yes. excited to have you. I've been really enjoying your work. Um, and there's a lot of ways to enjoy your work, too. Um, the big news for you right now is you got the new album coming out, 100 Cowboys. That's July 19th, I believe. Yep, July 19th. Right. So I've been able to listen to that. Really enjoyed it a lot. I had a really funny experience today, actually. You might get a kick out of. I was driving around trying to get this is a funny problem to have, but I'm trying to get a pass for my kayak so I can leave it at the beach and lock it up like a permit. Just okay. got a kayak. I'm really excited. But they're all sold out. So they don't have any more spots. So I was driving around it and they told me, try this spot, try that spot. And after the last spot, I was like, oh, that's a waste of time. And then your song, 
the chorus popped up. Next thing I heard was "Waste of Time." I was like, "That's so weird." Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Great song. Wait, I, what? What? Where are you based? That you need a kayak permit? Uh, Long Island, North Shore, okay. Long Island. So we've uh, huh. we've got some water around us. Okay. Yeah, I like the. the yeah, big but it was just this like, funny, like synchronous moment, you know. <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, I love that you're the, the big issue you're running into right now is like, ah, I, where can I freaking park my kayak? Like that's a, that's a funny problem to be having. Yep. I know it's a great problem to have. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But it's just so you get like the idea, um, beautiful day driving around today, really comfortable, sunny day and your record fits it so well. Just a really nice listen. Very kind of like upbeat feeling but when you pay attention there there's a little darkness sprinkled in there too yeah i think so it's like i am a big fan of making music that is uh sounds happy and then the lyrics kind of portray a different story um i personally don't really listen to any music that isn't you know over 120 bpm like that's kind of my my lower mm. limit i need stuff that's like pretty upbeat um, but I love like, I love sad lyrics. And I think like a band that does that really well is like the national. Um, and yes. so with this record, I was, I feel like I was really trying to like make a breakup record. Um, but still have it be kind of like summer bops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got an optimism to it, I guess, you know, I guess breakups are like the end of something, but there's a sadness but there's like that hint of optimism you know if you're not paying attention like it's it's kind of like when you see a person right they're smiling and, yeah they look happy but then if you dig in a little sometimes you realize there's more going on for sure for sure yeah i'm i think i'm lucky to be mostly a very happy person so it's uh i'm, I'm a pretty upbeat person as is <laughs> that's that's a good thing i yeah. get that impression um you know checking out some of your work on social media lots of humorous stuff uh you definitely have a lot of fun with music and i love that because sometimes people get so serious all the time about their art you know but you're definitely yeah. enjoying yourself and you know bringing smiles to people's faces you're having fun with it you're not taking everything so seriously you, you know sometimes people get super serious as artists and uh, you seem to be doing quite the opposite yeah i think the um I think like there is seriousness in making music. Like even the funny songs, there are serious parts to them. Like I take the the like parts that I'm playing and like the mixing of it and all that stuff pretty seriously. But like the sum total of it, I don't think has to be serious. Like you know, you can make it. I, I you make it and you throw it up. But I think people like harbor their songs for too long, and there's they build it up too much in their head to before re releasing it into the world and i think a really fun way to go about making music is going what am i going to make today make some crap and then by the afternoon it's out in the world i don't think that should be the only way you make music but that's mm -hmm. a fun way to make music i agree I, I like that working fast idea just kind of plowing through things not spending too much time laboring over every little decision because if you get caught up in that you never finish anything exactly and you seem very prolific with your work. It seems like you do that quite a bit. Is that a way you, you like to go most of the time? Hmm. I think we froze. Okay. <laughs> so Technical you're... difficulties. Hell yeah. That's part of everything you do when you're making music, right? There's always something that comes up. <laughs> that is true. I just recently had this thing where my screen cracked for my MacBook. And I brought it into the Apple shop to get repaired. And my, uh, I w went back to pick it up and they were like, okay, just give us a second. We're reinstalling the operating system. And I said, why the hell are you doing that? And uh, apparently it was factory reset. Um, thankfully, mm -hmm. most of the like big projects I was working on, I had backed up, but it still was a pain. It was a big pain in the ass. Really? Yeah, that's kind of inevitable with this stuff, right? Like. You're going to lose stuff. You know, you need backups. You need really two backups. Yeah. At all times. For sure. Sorry to hear that. 
It happens. Well, let me ask you, how do you deal with that? Um, I get the feeling you have a kind of lighthearted approach to it. Yeah, I when it happened to me, I was like, ah, oh, dang. For a second, I was like, shit, this is going to suck. Um, and then after that, and like that first 10 seconds of like, oh, no, what was on my computer that I didn't back up? I was like, OK, well, we're about to start a new record having a, you know a, an entirely new computer again maybe not the worst thing and uh you know it's been fun to like recreate new templates and set up my system to like now i can like perfectly set up my um my like filing system in my computer and like mm. you know i hadn't ever done that and now i have like a really nice system so there's there's positives to it there's definitely some negatives but we're looking at the positives yeah, I'm like inheriting my early decisions from when I first started even on a computer. So yeah. it's like you just deal with that and like it compounds over time. And sometimes you almost wish like, man, I could just start over. I know. Just go fresh. <laughs> well, if you're making that decision, it's a lot better. If like that's an active thing, you're like, all right, next week we're getting a new computer and we're starting from scratch. That's awesome. Like that is mm. the best feeling right. in my opinion. Not when it's forced upon you. Yeah. <laughs> So we were kind of talking like for a second before we hit record, you mentioned like having like gear around you. And um, I was watching one of your recent videos where you're making, um, you're making beats like on YouTube, basically. I think you did like two episodes of that. Yeah. And I was, I really enjoyed how simple you have everything. You had a kick and a snare and a hi-hat, I think, next to you. Yeah. And guitar and maybe a bass off camera. And that seemed like all you needed to get going. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, I think that I, I'm like a bad enough musician to where having the like lowest tier and like the, the simplest version of every instrument is a huge benefit. Like I'm not a good drummer, so I don't need five toms. I can do kick, snare, <sighs> hi-hat, and that is probably more than enough. Um, and yeah, so like, I, but my room is also like very small. Like the room I'm in right now is the one I do all my recording in. Um, and I like filling it up with toys, but there's a hard limit to how many toys I can have in here before it mm. doesn't feel good to be in. Um, but I did just get a, a Profit 6 yesterday, which I'm oh, nice. stoked about. Uh, Actually, it, sitting right next to me. Hell yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of the centerpiece. Yeah, yeah. you're going to love it. <laughs> oh my God, it's the best. Uh, I'm waiting yeah. for my double-tiered stand to come in so I can put my Juno on top of it. Um, but yeah, that's like a piece of equipment that I've been like itching for for a while. And then, you know, I went on Facebook Marketplace and I was like, oh, there's one for half price uh, that it would normally be. And it's five minutes away from me. So let's do it. Nice. Yeah, it's a great synth. It's got this, um, there's a knob on it called slop. And uh, oh, slop, yeah. Yeah, slop. And um, it basically detunes everything. It changes the timing. It makes it a little more random. Well, they updated it. They There's a setting you can turn it to the vintage knob. And oh, okay. uh, now, you know, when you play a note, it's always slightly different in tuning. The envelopes are slightly different speed. And it just, yeah. like, comes to life. It's like an old synth, you know, so, how they so kind of do what they want. If you were going to put the slop knob in, like, an ideal position, what what... Where on the clock is it for you? It's like pretty how far. How high is your? Is your oh, really? You, you got the <laughs> yeah, slot pranked. I like it. Yeah. Well, you. I wonder if you feel this way. Um, because you play guitar, you play real instruments, and you sing. Um, sometimes I find everything's just too in tune, and sure. if I'm trying to play guitar over some instruments that I programmed in, it's like the guitar is never perfectly in tune. Yeah, and it feels. There's this like at odds feeling sometimes. And I think the best way to fix that is to make the stuff in the computer a little worse, <laughs> you know? And yeah. this synth like kind of fits that way. Yeah. I mean, like I think about, you know, that's just like another example of where I think not being the best at all instruments is comes in like super handy. Like I got my own personal slop knob on <laughs> on everything I'm doing, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, and it's always set to about like, I don't know, it's set to 90% on most of the time. Um, <laughs> but 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think being too in tune for sure is not a great thing. And like anytime you're quantizing something and you put it to 100%, you listen back and you're like, what is going on? Like, it just feels crazy. Mm. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I agree. It's stiff. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. It's, it's right, but it's wrong. Yeah, exactly. That was my very rude awakening when I first got a computer to record on and I was like, finally, my drumming will be perfect and it'll, there's a right. grid I can put stuff to. And as soon as I did that, I was like, huh, like this song, it had this Doesn't feeling like anymore, it was yeah. just coming along on a conveyor belt, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And like everything was just dropped on the spot. It, it was weird um, compared I, to when I, you just play. I feel like, I mean, that's why I feel like you have so many people like eating up effects like uh what is it the rc20 anything with like a mm. warble on it people are like oh my god that's sick and I, I think it's great that like people are experimenting with those kind of effects like especially producers that are coming up now you have people freaking like oh my god the um sorry i'm all over the place but the uh tommy richmond song the million dollar baby which is like huge right now the mm. se his second biggest song is the same song but just like put through a vhs machine like it's just like lo-fied to shit which is sick i think it's awesome yeah. like throw some warble on something and everyone that is like you know 18 years old and hears it goes like holy crap what is happening here it's because people right. don't want to hear perfect shit they want to hear messy slop knob kind of kind of crap yeah awesome. i have a vhs machine right here it's all like ready to go where i can run Fuck the audio yeah. onto the tape and the only tape I have is an old Christian Slater movie called um, Pump Up the Volume <laughs> from the 80s or early 90s. <laughs> I think it makes it sound better just coming onto that tape too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember when I, was, when I was in college, I was biking to class and I was, I was like an audio engineer and, and I did a lot of electrical engineering type stuff. Um, and I was biking and I saw someone had thrown out this double deck cassette player uh, cassette player recorder and mm. i just thought it was like the coolest shit and the only tape that was inside of it was car wash um i don't know who it's by but that working at the car That's wash like 70s like, yeah yeah just that and so like i would like record stuff to this tape and you know you have to like put the little like bit of tape over the two um indents in the cassette to like ensure that you can record over it and I just thought that was the coolest thing, having like my record recorded to car wash. Like, you know, being 17, I was like, man, this is bad. This is punk rock right here. Yeah, right. <laughs> Especially that song, right? Yeah. It's extra special. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, there's something fun about the machine, you know, the mechanical stuff, getting its hands on it. You know, I even think sometimes just running stuff through wires and then back into the computer through some yeah. electronics or something can really make a big difference. It's like who's that producer that um, uh, producer slash en engineer that runs stuff through like pickles? What's her oh, name? Oh, that's uh, Sylvia Massey, right? Yeah, so yeah, like I've seen yeah. videos of hers where she's like, yeah, and if you put it through a, a dill spear, it really brings out the warmth. <laughs> and I'm like, there's no fucking way, but also that's fucking cool as hell. Yeah, I have her book. It's great. It's um, I think it's called Recording Unhinged. Yeah, um, makes sense. But it's just like all kinds of crazy experiments and stuff she did with bands like she produced tool and all the weird yeah. stuff they did to get their sounds oh my god um yeah it's great it's i so love that cool. kind of like adventurism in the music making we're like yeah. what can we do what kind of weird stuff will happen <laughs> yeah like running it through a pickle like i wouldn't even know how to do that <laughs> yeah i i think in one of in one of her productions there was like um she like shot a piano like they put a piano and mic'd it up in a field and then they shot it. Uh, and that was like something in the song. And that, like, yeah, it's yeah. so cool. Right. If, if you have unlimited budget and you can do that kind of stuff, shoot some yeah. pianos. It's something I've been really paying a lot of attention to with recording is like having stories behind the things that go into your songs. It's so easy to just like dial up plugins and even like, um, guitar amps and stuff um but I, I had a guest on the show jeff leisowitz and he's, a, he's actually a storyteller and he was saying like you know like led zeppelin rented out a castle and they put the guitar amp in the fireplace and put the mic at the top of the chimney and they recorded that guitar for whatever song and he's like 
how many guitars have been recorded since then? And we're talking about it 50 years later. Right. It's something different. It's kind of special. And I, shooting the piano. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do wonder, like, I, I feel like a lot of that sort of thing can't sound that good. But because it's like such a weird thing to do, they're like, oh, well, the chimney mic has to be in the project. But like, I wonder how yeah. many engineers have right. been like, ah, oh, shit, now I have to have this terrible sounding mic because they because the band thinks it's cool. Yeah, just in there somewhere, dirtying yeah. it up. <laughs> Making people say, who the hell makes this? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but it does. It has to go in. <laughs> well, you have an engineering background. Right, you've. Yeah. Um, I think you. I read you were working in Nashville for a while. Had a studio. Yeah, had a little home studio. Uh, we called it Happy Camper Recording, um, and it was just like the our. We had this kind of big extended basement area, and I lived with my band, uh, this great bass player named Reed Gaines, a drummer named Garrett Frakel, and my keys player named Andre Bernier, and we would track. Uh, you know some super mediocre stuff down there we were 20 years old and we were not very good uh but it was a really nice crash course in um you know first off like starting a business uh but also like okay how can people are paying us to do this now how can i mix this record to make it sound passable and i think i got a lot better at my craft just from like si biting off more than i could chew for three years Mm. yes kind of pushing yourself to that limit seems to be it's a great place it's it's like exercise i guess right if you're lifting something that's easy nothing changes but it's not until yeah. you're at the edge of your ability where things actually start to happen yeah absolutely now as an engineer um i'm kind of surprised to see how you like to work in such simple environments you're like, I'm kind of um, surprised your music sounds so fucking bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. Your music sounds great. And it, it has um, a lot of vibe to it. Thank you. In the best possible way. You know, like it's not um, like hyper polished, but it's still poppy. It's got soul. Like, you know, it, it sounds like you have a slop knob, but I don't know if it's as high as you say it is. <laughs> but I, I wonder... Um, do you ever get the urge to take it to like a different level or do you, or is that better for you when you work in those kinds of environments? You know, I think for me, the big, um, the, I'm trying to minimize any bottleneck there I have to creating stuff. And so my studio is right next to my bedroom. Like I have like the master bedroom of my house is my studio. Um, and going, waking up and being able to just step into my studio and make stuff means I get to make a lot of stuff. Um, do I want to work in big, nice studios? Yeah, I think it'd be a lot of fun. And I, I've gotten lucky in being able to do some cool sessions in some of those kind of places. But I am really, really fast at working in my spot. And I don't think there's any real substitute for... Uh, for, you know, ease of use. Um, I just want mm. to make my bar for making stuff as low as possible. Right. I, I'm with you on that. Um, I try to keep stuff set up, ready to go. Um, templates, just so I'm not setting up mics and all that kind of stuff. And because it's like every single extra detail is like a point of failure potential yeah. point of failure where oh no if that doesn't work then you're scratching your head you're trying to f you're on the floor connecting wires and yeah not quite as fun and i just don't have the like wherewithal to if i'm trying to write a song and suddenly this for some reason i'm not getting sick output from my interface i don't have the wherewithal to go okay let's address that issue and then step right back into the creative process i have to be if i start doing making something new i need it to be seamless and uh i've set up my studio to where it always works for me until my computer factory resets and then it doesn't yeah. work at all <laughs> yeah there's always going to be something to come in and find you but 
you know, keeping it simple, I think is great. Actually, one of my favorite new things I, I've got is this Zoom 4-track. It's, it's the fastest thing I've ever recorded on. It's got huh. two mic inputs and it has its own like Zoom field recording mic. Oh, yeah, and yeah. You can record four tracks on it. Um, it's got a couple effects in there, like a guitar amp even, so you can plug your guitar right in. And you just put four tracks on, and then you can bounce them, and then you can do four more, and you can keep doing that. And then when you yeah. put it in the computer, it's all the tracks are there. You don't like lose anything. And it's as fast as you can go, it'll keep up with you, which is really I exciting. I, I absolutely love that. Yeah, yeah I, I have a Tascam four channel. Uh, behind my desk because at one point it was like a part of my setup when I was recording podcasts in here. Um, yeah. And it's like, it's any like useful tool that is speeding up the process is like, that's the key shit. It's not the like super intricate, fancy machines. It's always the like, Oh, well if I have this one thing, it shaves a minute off of my like setup time and then it's golden. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, when you're ready to write, like, um, how, what's your process like? Do you are you waiting around for inspiration? Are you just showing up and like seeing what happens? How do you like to get to work when it's time to make music? Uh, I am, I I make stuff every day, so I'm like writing something new every day, um, or I guess not new every time. Sometimes I'm like continuing work from the previous day, um, and my writing process feels like smashing my head against a wall until something happens um i i don't feel like waiting for i don't feel like waiting for inspiration is a useful tactic when trying to like be an artist of any sort professionally i i think you have to you have to inspiration is far too fickle yeah yep fleeting and uh not always showing up but I do find like when you, when you show up, when you get to work, um, a lot of times stuff happens, you know, something happens that makes you exciting. You sort of have to light the spark yourself and then get that going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are you mostly writing as you record? Is that the way you like to work? I... Is it, uh, typically what comes first is like i'll have a melody and like idea of a lyric uh and you know with melody is coming some chord progression typically um so like on the moment of like an idea actually surfacing it's pretty much music and lyrics all at once um and so in that way, no, I don't think it's like being recorded at the same time. But when I start like shaping lyrics further, typically there's already some stuff tracked. But the mm. the the musical idea, I think it's important for me to have a concept of melody and lyric and idea before messing around with too many toys. Right. Something to just to jump off from. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like, you know, if I make a really cool sounding drum and I have no idea what the lyric is going to be, I'm too I'm too into the what the drums are doing to ever be like, oh, this is a love song or, you, you know, it's it's right. I'm already screwed from at that point. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I think once you get that, it's all about for me anyway, um, figuring out the the direction I'm trying to go. The and I might not have that clearly mapped out but if once i have like some something thematic some kind of perspective something yeah. interesting to chase yeah absolutely so when you're when you're tracking stuff are you typically are you playing most of the the instruments when you're doing things it's like are, are you are you jumping around on a bunch of different instruments yeah I'll, when i'm by myself yeah i also play with a band too so then i'm playing guitar and singing so I've got kind of like both outlets, which is a lot of fun. Amazing. But yeah, I try to I'm jumping around pretty quick. Um, whether it's even if I'm programming stuff, I'm, I'm trying to move fast. Yeah, that's um, almost um, almost too fast. I like that approach. Yeah, just because 
there's too many decisions along the way that、um, maybe don't belong in the early stages when you're writing, when you're coming up with ideas, when you're creating.、Uh, if I start thinking about like a compressor on my snare drum or something, yeah, it's like it's an it's a it's a different part of the creative brain. Yeah, and as soon as you switch to that, it's so hard to get back into lyrics or into you know the the composition aspect of it. For me,、mm. uh, here's a question that I I feel like is always telling for people's studio: How far is your drum kit, if you have one, to your computer? Um, can you see it? Uh, see where that light is?、Uh, okay. Point like that light right there. That's、yeah. the drum. So. It's like ten feet away. Okay. Okay. It's, so it's、uh, when you when you're it, recording drums, do you have to go to your computer, hit record, and then go to the drums, or is there, do you have a way to control your DAW from there? I've done that where I have it, but、uh, usually I'm just hitting record and running back.、Um, okay. I've got a set of wireless headphones that work well and just run to it and、uh, go for it. A wireless set of headphones that have a low enough latency to where you can actually record with them. Yes,、um, I don't know how they say the, the name. There, it's like AI, 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 <laughs> I, I, I. I guess they call it.、Um, they're、That's、not Bluetooth、branding. though. Yeah, I don't know what what that name means. They're not Bluetooth. No, they have this special、uh, low latency transmitter you plug into your、uh, interface, and it connects to that. They also have Bluetooth too, but you use that、uh, other connection. I forget what they call it, but、um, it works、oh, it's great. Prob- it's probably what the same sort of frequency range that they're using for like in ear packs, wireless in ear packs for live stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, could be、mm. interesting.、Um, but it is really nice, especially when you're putting guitars on and you know switching instruments. You're not dealing with like that extra cable.、Um, I might have to get yeah, some of those. I, I recommend them. I really do. I think they're they sound great and they're they're fun. I'm because I am. I'm walking back and forth a lot, so there's a bit. I see、I've, in your videos, you've got it where you're just like kind of sitting at the drums already, and you just hit record. And yeah, I think that's a really cool way to work. My my setup. Yeah, I'm gonna pull this back.、Uh, my setup is desk, or actually, you know what? If if this box is my、uh, is my room, I have my desk. And then drum kit, synths, couch. So it's like all of、nice. it is just in this one corner, and I can easily control my computer from all parts of it, which is really nice.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just keeps you going, right? Yeah.、Hmm. Is that the process you used for this album for a hundred cowboys? Yeah, yeah. It's、uh, all recorded in my room. Actually, the whole of a hundred cowboys. This was the first time I've co-written. Um, a project, and this this record was co-written with my housemate Noah Tauscher, who's also a fantastic producer.、Um, and you know, it was fun to like get to、um, have someone else's opinions on a song for once. Like I've、mm-hmm. I've always just been alone doing this kind of stuff, and having him being like, "What if we didn't do this thing that you do on every one of your songs?" <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, that's a good point. Maybe." Um, and so it was a it was a really fun experience, and it was about a month long of intensively being in the studio and、uh, you know grinding away on this record.、Hmm. As far as like、uh, the collaboration, is it more production style, or are you writing the music and the lyrics together?、Uh, we're writing, yeah, we wrote music and lyrics together.、Um, We co-produced all of it, or most of it.、Uh, I think there were one or two songs, maybe that he didn't write on, slash, maybe didn't produce on.、Um, yeah, it's it's fun. It's a good time. I'm、mm. not used to collaboration. I also have known him since we lived together in college, so I've known him for like eight years.、Um, so it's someone I like deeply trust with my music. So that has been good. Yeah, because. Vulnerability, right? That's a big part of it. Yes, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, playing in a band, and I've kind of done my whole life, but ah,、uh, in the early days, it was before I ever had a chance to do stuff myself. So there's, you know, 
you're collaborating with people, but you're also like kind of fighting to get your ideas out there a little bit. Yeah. And after having enough time doing it by myself, it's so nice to work with people and like not care about that at all. Right. I don't care if my idea makes it. Like we're just trying to get an idea that's the best idea. Yeah. And to have people that you can share that with and know that they feel the same way. And if they tell you some sort of criticism, they say they don't like this or that or the other thing that you did, you know that it's coming from the place of we're trying to make the best song we can. Not yeah. like you're bad, Brian. And, you know, <laughs> like I don't the like idea you is bad. I don't like your guitar part. Right. The idea is bad, but separate <laughs> from that, you are also bad. That's how I always take it. Um, no, I um, yeah. <laughs> I I'm lucky in that I don't I, I don't think I've ever or at least not since collaborating more seriously in the last like four ish years. Um, I'm pretty good about not taking that kind of critiques personally. Um, yeah, I, 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 I've always been on the, you know, other people tend to have better ideas than me, uh, especially in like the short term. Um, I feel like my, my strong suit is in coming up with a lot of ideas mm -hmm. And other people are probably better at editing them down. Um, uh -huh. So I, I don't, I'm, I'm pretty good at not taking that kind of stuff personally. Mm, nice. That's good to have. It's a good quality and someone you want to work with too. In reading this uh, bio they sent me for the album, um, as fun and kind of playful as the album can be, uh, it is based on some kind of s more serious subject matter, more personal stuff than you've kind of written about in the past. Yeah, I think so. I mean, this I've written about serious stuff in the past. I think this one was just the first time I've gone through something and then said, OK, I'm going to make this record about that. It was the first time I've gone in with like mm -hmm. the intention of writing multiple songs about one part of my life. And so that felt very intentional and it felt very um, cathartic. So how does that work with a collaborator then when you're trying to do that? If, like, Because you would think if you're going to work with other people, it might be less of that. But in your case, you've actually went further in that direction. Yeah, I think it wouldn't have worked with other collaborators, but because Noah has been like my best friend for so long and was a pretty key part of uh, getting through that period, um, it was, it felt very natural and I feel, I feel very, um, lucky to feel that open with someone that I can also trust creatively. So mm -hmm. like talking about that kind of stuff and, and writing this sort of a record felt supernatural with him. Yeah. That's really cool. I guess sometimes when you're around people like that, you tend to open up around them. I mean, I've had that with friends where the conversation is almost like a learning experience for me about how I'm feeling because now I'm finally talking about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of have to like piece it together and, it, you know, you kind of think, you know, what you think about stuff. And then when you, when it's put to task, when, when someone goes, okay, but what, what is that feeling like for you? you starting to you know you start talking and the the idea became becomes more fully formed and that is a helpful uh you know that's why people have you know need to like sound out their ideas that's what sounding boards are yeah right yeah a lot of our good sessions with people that i've collaborated with start with conversations just chatting yeah um Last summer, I went to a songwriting retreat in Monterey, California. You're in LA, right? Yeah. So, okay. Monterey is, is so beautiful there. And um, oh, yeah. we're writing with people you never met before. And that's, that's kind of wild, but it, it was really fun. Um, we started with conversation, you know, finding out about each other. And then like little things pop up here and there. And those sort of become like thematic things that make it into the music. Right. And the stuff that I probably would have never thought to write myself, but then when you realize like, oh yeah, we kind of both feel that same thing, even though we're talking about different situations, that universal yeah. human experience starts to come out. And that's what music is for. It's finding those overlaps. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, I, I, I do love, um, when set, when you have sessions like that and they go well, it feels even better because it's like, oh, we didn't even know each other and we were able to find this common ground. Um, and then of course, sometimes it doesn't work at all. And what you write is terrible, but that's the give and take of, <laughs> of, of those sorts of sessions. Yeah. Well, I think that's true really of anybody, right? Even by yourself or even with the band. I mean, sometimes you just don't get anything, mm -hmm. you know, and that's that you just kind of keep going. That's my girlfriend. She's <laughs> trying not to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. That was almost got away with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until I called her out. So we're talking about like that universal thing. I, I think it's interesting how sometimes you find that when you get very specific and you like one of the examples that in your songs, um, that song Nashville is very specific about this like experience of being there and like thinking about somebody's family and their dog. And um, you could very easily have not had that exact scenario, but know what that's like. And it takes yeah. you to that feeling like right there. Um, it seems like you, you like to do a bit of that kind of stuff in your writing, kind of these, um, I guess like specific things and then you kind of get to these like larger themes with that. Yeah, I think so. I, th I think that's kind of like the most, um, like gratifying part of songwriting is being able to put like very specific parts of my own life into it. And it's almost like it's, it, it, it feels the same as having like an inside joke with myself except it's not really a joke. It's more of just like, this is a thing that I, I only know about and I get to put it into something that much, many more people will hear um, mm. and might feel something because of. But for me, it's like, oh no, this is something that happened just to me and no one knows exactly about the beta fish from that song Nashville. Um, but I love the idea that something that specific to myself can make other people feel a way about something. So it's, right. it, it feels like a little secret I'm, I'm putting into, into my work. Yeah. It's like you can replace that beta fish with anything. Yeah. There's another line. I don't remember if it was that song or not, but you mentioned like taking a picture with maybe a Phil or it was Jake. very specific. <laughs> of yeah. Jake. Yeah. It was like yeah. a, an actual person's name. And that's like, I don't even really know anybody named Jake, but <laughs> you get the idea. It's cool. Yeah. I, yeah, that's, that's just like when I, when we were, when we first got to Nashville, when, when I first moved there, there was, um, our friend Jake, uh, came and visited, um, and he helped us move some stuff in. And we just took this one picture that was hanging in our basement in Nashville for a really long time. And it was, I, it was one of the last things that we took down before leaving. And it just felt like a really significant part of my own, you know, personal lore for living in Nashville, um, and so then, yeah, it felt really natural to put it into, into the song Nashville. Um, and yeah, people that listen to the song have no clue what that's about. But for me, I'm like, yeah, there's the Jake line. <laughs> yeah. Does Jake know about it? <laughs> yeah, I played it for him. Yeah, nice, nice. <laughs> Those little things, though, they, they make it more personable. It makes you as an artist come to life in the music as a person. And um, yeah, I guess like since you're bringing on into those like more universal human themes, it helps people connect and relate to right. what you're going through and what you're doing there. Yeah, absolutely. I love the sound of the record. Um, really clean sounding, but uh, like uh, got like a lot of character to it. It's not, Thank you. It's, I wouldn't call it slick though. You know what I mean? Um, it's, yeah, it's not a super like glossy record, but also it's not like a. It doesn't feel like super distorted and tapey and grimy. It's. I think it's a. I think if I could remake it, I'd lean it more dirty. I'd dirty it up more than it is. Um. 
but yeah, it, you know, it's 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 kind of like just a snapshot of what I liked to listen to when I was making the record is how I tried to, you know, how I tried to make it. Um, and, right. you know, if I made it now, it would be a totally different record, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I really liked the, the vocal sound. I, th- I think it was even on the first track, um, listening. Is that Arizona? I think it was yeah, called Arizona. Very present, upfront vocal, pretty dry, mm-hmm. clean. Do you remember much about recording that? Yeah, um, the way I record vocals is, uh, I think, is going to piss people off a little bit. I only ever do. I think the most vocal tracks I've ever done or most vocal takes I've ever done is like five um, because I just can't stand recording vocals and I do them from this chair I'm in right here with this mic just you know editing on my computer uh, and like controlling the DAW just facing the computer with this mic Um, and I think what it was going through an Avalon which is what it's going through currently and I like it being compressed with, I think it might've been compressed with Devil Lock, the Sound Toys plugin. Mm. Uh, I think that it's such an intense compressor, but it makes my vocals sound pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, I like I like tight and dry vocals. I like double tracking stuff. Um, yeah. Mm. What kind of mic do you have now? Is that like a universal audio? Or? Yeah, this is the UA SD1. Uh, okay. It's, I love it. It's it's fantastic. I also recently have been experimenting with the OMA. Um, I don't even know if there's like a model number. It's just the OMA condenser mic, um, mm. and that's been cool. Uh, the problem with condensers in my room is just I live right next to the highway, and it gets super noisy. Yeah, so it can be difficult. Yeah. yeah, I can like hear my neighbor breathing on mine. You know, <laughs> love that. <laughs> it's like maybe that makes I, it even I, better. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I've I've picked up some interesting sounds in the background. <laughs> it's uh it's a funny way to realize like all the noise around you. You put your headphones on, you're like, oh wow, I didn't notice that hum. I didn't notice yeah. like that I can hear this and that or the other thing. I didn't know out. the AC was that loud. Like that's always yeah. the big one for me. I'm like, oh shit, that's that's got some yeah, some volume to it. Right. You're just like living with it all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've always trying to figure out a good uh, vocal mic, you know, just uh, I think I'm, I'm like you, though. I kind of do like that's a dynamic, I guess. Right. Yeah. That you have. Um, what are you using something... right now? Uh, it's a Heil PR, is it PR30, PR40. It's oh, okay. kind of like a broadcast microphone. Um. I like it very much, um, even for vocals. And, and I do the same thing as you. I'm like sitting here at the yeah. desk and just singing or, or, you know, turning knobs as I do it. And, yeah. uh, it's, it's just nice. It's, um, it's lower stakes. Up. I know. Yeah, it yeah. is. It's like, I'm just like doing this. I'm just getting something quick. I'm not going in the vocal booth and, you know, transforming or anything. I know. I know. I, Anytime I'm doing sessions where other people are engineering, which is like very infrequently, and they're like, okay, let's lay down some vocals. You want to hop in the booth? I'm like, I so desperately don't want to hop in the booth. Like that doesn't sound fun. But then inevitably I do it. And we know what we come away with is bad because I'm not, I'm not a singer like that. I'm not a performer like that where I can be like, okay, it's on now. All right, let's do this. I have to just be like, I have to in my head, make it the lowest stakes possible. Um, and then it comes out how I want it. Hmm. That's probably a good way to think about a lot of stuff, though. Lowest stakes possible. Yeah, I think so. It's a good way I mean, to really, operate. Really, what are the stakes, right? Like, what are we really doing here? I mean, yeah, we're making you know, silly songs from our bedroom. Come on, that's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that's it's about as high stakes as trying to find a permit for my kayak, right? <laughs> like... <laughs> Just the, making the, noises. the problems we have. <laughs> yeah, good problems to have. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very stressed out about this vocal part. <laughs> I know. It's uh it's all silly, but it's fun. And I it's a lot better than a lot of other potential jobs. And I'm I'm I love doing it. It's so much fun. 
How much time are you spending with um, the social media aspect of it? You've got like your thing is so on lock. I was really impressed about it. Just um, you've got like this. You've got the look to it. You've got the, um, you know, just overall vibe and um, Thank you. one thing after another. Just like really well put together, very consistent. I appreciate that. Yeah, I try to be super consistent with it because, you know. For social media stuff, oh, there she is. <laughs> uh, for social media stuff, it's important to like, you know, consistency is kind of the whole thing. Um, I'm lucky enough to really enjoy doing that kind of stuff. Like, I love making funny songs. Um, it takes me about, the, the thing that takes the longest is coming up with something funny. So if I wake up, like with certain songs, I've just woken up and been like, oh, this is a funny idea. And so if there's an idea already planted, it takes me maybe 45 minutes to an hour to record the song and then 30 minutes to shoot and edit it. Um, so all in wow. all, yeah, like we're coming up on two hours for, for putting these together and I'll, I'll make it in the morning and then put it out in the afternoon um, for the most part. And that's just, you know, that's part of the reason why the efficiency thing is so important for me. It's because I need to be able to make, put stuff out all the time. And so it's, mm. you know, I don't have time to be like messing with new templates and rewiring stuff. Right. And I guess you probably have templates, not just for the music, but the video stuff as well. Uh, yeah, I have, I have like effect, like presets that mm -hmm. I've created that, you know, I also have a, a green screen that drops down from my ceiling, which is really nice. Like I've, I've, nice. I've made the whole system very efficient. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I have a green screen, but it's such a pain in the ass to set up and it's always wrinkly. Exactly. And it's like, I don't use it because of that. Exactly. You need the, look at this. I'm going to, I'm going to give you, I'm going to fill you in on how, how awesome my setup is. Look at that. It's kind of right down. I have a little crank. Right down in front of you. Yeah. That's so best. cool. And then my camera and uh, light is set up right behind me and it, we're locked mm -hmm. in. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. For people watching or listening, um, <laughs> and the green screen literally just came like right in front of him <laughs> and it just perfect though nice and easy yeah because there's no time right for messing around because that's the stuff that uh for me it's it's like the least enjoyable all that kind of yeah you know i just want to make the stuff i don't want to be messing around and trying to figure out how to set things up and, exactly exactly um, it's great stuff. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really happy. I've, I've discovered it and gotten to go into your world. Um, there's so many funny videos. The pornography one was great. <laughs> I've got a kick out of that. And so much good wordplay too. Um, very <laughs> fun you. stuff. Um, it's, but the I'm, album is beautiful. It really is. It's, um, it's really cool to see like these two dimensions to your work and, there's still like that hint of playfulness on the album, but it's also got um, something else going on there. That's, you know, you can, you can relate to like on a lonely night or a long drive or something by yourself. So it's for sure. Really cool. Really great work, man. I, I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm loving making stuff right now and I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky to be surrounded by people that are very supportive and, uh, you know, people are, <laughs> I think for a long time, I felt a little embarrassed by the like career path I've chosen. I, I always felt like, oh man, the people from high school must be like, what the fuck is Carter doing now? <laughs> like, why is he making these songs about, you know, pornography? Um, and now, you know, people from like back in my hometown have reached out and been like, love what you're doing. Like, this is so cool. And like, my parents are awesome about being like, like when I when I told them that I wanted to be in music, they were like, "Hell yeah, go do nice. that!" Uh, and so I have been super lucky in that regard. Um, yeah, and I, I love it. You can tell, man, it comes through. Really does, and that's um, one of the most important things I think we can all do in our music is put that passion and make sure it gets through to the listener. Hell yeah. So listen, um, I'll send people to your website. I'll send them to links to the album when it comes out. That's July 19th, 100 Cowboys, Carter Vale. Yep. Uh, anything else before we wrap this one up? 
Um, no, thanks so much for having me. I had a, I had a blast. I'm, uh, I, I'm really grateful to get to chat music stuff with y'all. It's, it's, uh, it was fun. Man, anytime. If you want to come back, we'll do it again. Absolutely. I'm always down. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Music Production Podcast. If you want to help support the show, the best thing you can do is tell a friend, someone you think that would enjoy the show. I'd also love it if you could leave a review wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to support my work, you can go to brianfunk.com. I've got tons of Ableton Live packs, tutorials, samples. You can check out my book, The 5-Minute Music Producer, which gives you 365 short music-making activities to help you get started, stay inspired, and finish more music. And there's also The Music Production Club where you get my latest releases as soon as they're finished. It gives you access to a community of like-minded people who are making music and sharing ideas. You can share your music, find new collaborators, and participate in our live meetings where we set up some kind of musical challenge and then make music together and share our results at the end. That's the Music Production Club. It's a lot of fun, and you can find that and everything that I do at brianfunk.com. Thanks again for listening to the show, and have a great day.